Howdy. For this video, I'm going to go over how I set up my overall display for my game when I actually have it up and running. A couple people have asked, you know, what what I do to how it looks the way that it looks. So I figured I'd kind of go over that briefly real quick. Uh, it's actually just a few simple modules. One of my favorite ones that I get questions about all the time is the theme, which is this D&D 5e UI. It really makes everything have this cool D&D look because that's what I play on Foundry. But it, I really like the way it looks. I think it looks pretty cool. Another one that I do a lot is down here. I have to use my little cheat sheet to make sure I know all the ones that I have on here. I have so many that I have running at the same time. So down here, uh, I was testing some uh, loot things. In addition to that, we're going to add minimal UI, monks scene navigation, monks little details. In addition to that, we are going to have tidy UI sheet, tidy UI game settings, and token action heads up display. And that will do it. So it's going to completely change the way everything looks. So now on this end, we have a minimized bar for the scenes to be able to navigate through. We have a pop out for the actual actions are minimized over here off to the side. We also have on the bottom the macro bar is minimized. Uh, all of these can be locked into place to make sure that they stay up with just a simple lock button. Same thing on this end, you can lock them. Uh, also it minimizes the players like that and just creates them a dot in the corner. One cool feature with this is you can go into the uh, configure settings. Uh, the look of this with the minimized boxes is the tidy UI game settings when you do this it puts everything into very neat separate folders without it it just becomes huge long drawn page and it's very difficult to look at and it's very hard to find things that you're looking for but first we're gonna look at the minimum UI so I really like the color scheme that you can do so all of the outlined colors to the left here so it's kinda of got a little out layer around the the small icons and then the out layer of or the outline just of the big box has got like an orange i'm actually really partial to green myself um it's my favorite color so sometimes i'll go ahead and change the theme to kind of match what i what i want you pick whatever color you're looking for and just click ok same thing here i try to get uh try to get one one light and one darker one let me get it a little bit more opaque right there perfect and I don't think I clicked save. Oh, I did save it on that end, but I didn't save the other one. Configure settings. I didn't save it. That's my own fault. And come down here. Go back to the green again. And click OK. All right. So that will create a nice kind of theme around that. And we'll save the changes. And then so now around that, it's got kind of a cool little green aura around it, which I personally I think it makes it kind of pop, especially with the black. So another really cool thing that you can do is all of the little simple UI features like that can all be changed and affected. So if you want uh, the things to be a little bigger and easier to see, you can update you know, all the icons to them to stand out a little bit easier. You can make them all a single road, just like how it is like this, or you can have them pop out to the side. I personally like them popped out to the side. Sometimes it defaults to them, minimizing them into the same. Uh, to do that, you control to the right. When you hover over the ones that you're looking for, it'll show them. Also, another cool one that you can do is, uh, well, any of these, that they all default to auto-hide, but if you want them to stay up or you want to always make it visible, you can. You can hide completely, and it'll just always stay down. Whatever you want to do, the macro bar, you can move the positioning on it like this. So the lower the number, it can only go 170, then it moves it kind of about like here where it normally is. And if you go higher, it'll make it more over to the right. Personal preference. You can also change the macro sizes so if you only just want three macros, six or ten. In addition to that, you can actually hide everything on the entire screen by even the chat window by clicking the Foundry logo. So when you use this minimal UI, it will actually remove the, fo the Foundry logo that's usually in the top left-hand corner. So if you want just the small logo, you can do that. And when you click on it, it will remove the main UI settings, which is the screen the macro bar and then the the main UI controls right here let me lock it so and this is the the view if you have them off to the side popped out which I, I personally like it's a little cleaner because when it's all one single line it kind of makes it hard to see 
Uh, another cool one, so depending on the situation that it might work for, if you're creating a particular scene and you really want to have something you know, that's very unique looking or you want to be able to see the whole map at the same time or someone's on a laptop and they can't really see that much, you can click that and it will remove everything. And that, that in itself is kind of cool. You could be able to turn everything off. Don't know when it would really be very useful, but if, I don't know, maybe if your characters, you know, you have one of your players that doesn't really want to look at all the other stuff, then they can just move it around. And then when they're like, oh, hey, we're in combat, then they can activate it. Whatever is beneficial to them. Uh, also, with this, it also makes the heads-up display a little bit more prominent when everything's kind of on the screen like this. So everything kind of pops up here, and then you, you know, this is pretty much your main actions that you're going to need that you can do on your character sheet. Another nice little feature I like that's part of the monk settings or some of the little details is being able to actually hover over the item, being able to see what it is. Otherwise, you'd have to right click and you know edit the item to be able to pop up and be able to see you know what's in it. With this, you just pretty much hover over it and boom, tells you whatever it is. It tells you if it's a martial weapon, it's equipped, it's proficient, actions, the distance, everything, how much it weighs, how much it costs. Very, very useful. I know. My wife plays and she gets frustrated because she wants to look at an item and she clicks it on an accident because she's trying to look at it. And with this, she was like, oh, I can read everything. I can do it all secretly and I like it. So it has it has some uses. In addition to that, I really like this. This is the all these icons like that was part of the D&D &D 5e module setting. Uh, also, whenever you load the game, it'll uh, usually it'll create this image. So if you like log out of the game. Let me get back into it and watch the test world, um, which of course is not doing it because I have nothing on this thing, so it's got it's it's very uh, very blank. Uh, it'll create it'll have this really cool picture of Candlekeep in the background. Um, I'm trying to see if I can get it to to pop up. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to get it to pop up, unfortunately. Well, if you have a really really large map and it's gonna take forever to load, I promise you, if you have this on there, you will see that image many a time because. That's what always happens on my game. I, I can never get it to, uh, to work right. Another cool feature with the uh, Tidy 5e Sheets is the uh, option to be able to make a, a, a dark-themed player sheet. So the default player sheet isn't bad. It, 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 looks, it looks okay. I really, really like the Tidy 5e Sheets. There are certain benefits of this one. You can kind of edit things. Some things a little bit easier. You can delete things way easier. Um, there are there are benefits. Don't get me wrong, but I personally love the way that the tidy 5e sheets look. I, I love the dark theme. I think it looks amazing. It has a lot of benefits of being able to save things on it. So like you have got a dragonborn character that's going to do flame breath all, or his breath weapon all the time. You can save it right there. I have one player that really likes to use their character sheet when they play and doesn't really like using the heads up display. So he saves all of his things in his features. There's all of his favorites right here. So as soon as he opens up his character sheet, he has access to it right then and there and saves him a lot of time. So, character like this, so Randall, you know, when he clicks C on the keyboard, he can pop up his character sheet and, you know, whatever action. So, if he's got second wind, then, you know, he can he can pop it right here and use the ability and, you know, roll and get the effect that he's going to get and makes it makes it really useful. To actually get the theme though, you have to go through your settings, you got to configure settings, module settings, uh, and you're going to go down to tidy 5e sheet. And the very top one right here, it'll say alternate theme, dark. Normally, it will have the same kind of white color of the other one that still is very easy to read. But the, I think the dark theme really makes it pop, and it makes certain items really, really easy to see. And it really makes certain aspects of the character sheet just really, just very, very fluid. And that kind of makes you be a little more immersive, and you can kind of like see things a little bit better. In addition to that... I'm trying to think if there's any other display things that I really go over besides that. I believe that's the main one. There's also a Tidy 5e NPC sheet, which I don't really use that often. It works, and it, I think it actually takes more away than what I like. I actually I actually like the default sheet for NPCs personally. I feel like the, the, the smaller sheet for this one, it doesn't, it, I think it takes a, a little bit away and it kind of makes it harder to find certain things, and especially with NPCs, I, I'm usually adding things and taking things off to them a lot. And if I have to do it the other way, like with the main sheets, like with the tidy sheets, it, it's not always easy to delete stuff. So to delete an item, you got to right click, and then you have to edit the item. 
uh, or sorry, I take that back. You got to click this top right hand corner to do the unlock button. Then you can go through, then you can delete an item. And that's not that big of an issue. It makes it really easy. So you're not going to delete something on accident. So there's a good thing about that. But I, I just really like the, for at least NPCs, because I, I edit them so much. I don't like the fact of having to right click just to leave something like that. And if I, especially if I need to get something quick, like if I got a character that's getting ready to search them and I don't want them to get an item and I need to delete it in a heartbeat, I don't want to have to be like, oh crap, got to undo this and unlock that. It's just a little too much. In addition to that, let me make sure I have all the modules, make sure I talked about all the main ones. Uh, the scene navigation is actually really unique. So if you create a folder for your scenes, so we'll create a, we'll create a folder. We'll do uh, test folder and we'll throw, you know, we'll do some just generic words, create a scene, click enter, and we'll create another generic scene and we'll save that. So we'll activate both of these scenes and or we'll toggle the navigation to all of these scenes and we'll toggle the navigation to this one. So it will actually kind of make a, a simple menu where you don't have to worry about all of all of the things at the same time. It kind of condenses them instead of having the, the maps come down and take up like half your screen, especially if you have about 15 or 12 scenes, you know, loaded at the same time, it, it starts to grow and just take over the top of your screen. I'm playing on, a, I have a TV set up in my monitor and it takes up like half my screen and I hate it. But with the minimal scenes with monks, you know, minimal scene details, it makes it really, really nice that especially if you're using one folder that you have a bunch of scenes attached to, you just toggle that folder and you can literally switch back and forth between the images it, as much as you want. So you can, you can flip between them. If you need to go back to another one, you know, you can minimize this. You can minimize the whole thing and take it off so you don't have to see it at all if you don't want it. So if you actually do have, this thing will keep just going out this way, and it'll just keep going left and right. It won't actually ever go down. So that's another really nice thing, too. And then the scenes themselves will kind of compress on themselves, but then when you hover over them, it will show you which one's which. Also, it also highlights whichever one you have activated. So say if I activate this map, it'll actually create like a little aura around it to kind of help you know this is the map that I'm using right now. Same thing with this one. So if I activate this one and I click over, close this folder, that one lights up like a little purple aura. Makes it really easy to tell, okay, this is the map that I was on. Because I, I set my maps up so that my players can travel back and forth between various maps. And sometimes I'm confused to which map was the one that I had activated, which was the base map. And I have to kind of go back and forth until I figure it out. But with this, it makes it really easy. Okay, I know there. this was the map that was my base map and I go from there. And I want to say, the Monk's Little Details, this, it's got a bunch, a bunch of icons for it and a bunch of different settings. It's got so many things that I would literally almost have to do in a video just for this solely because there's just so many things on it. Uh, so I won't do it on this one. But this is pretty much what I do just to set my just base game up. So like if I create a world... From scratch these are some of the first things that I do to set up just to to create just the base image that I'm looking for and I, I is personally what I like to do uh, I know some people like the way that it looks whenever I show videos and I get you know questions like hey how did you get it to look like that and this this is pretty much what I do so it's it's pretty simple it's just a handful of modules things like five or six but you know if you have any questions about anything just let me know and I'll be sure to answer you as quick as I can but meantime I'll see you in the next one